Yeah, hello everybody and welcome back to Space Engineers and welcome today to the build of the mining ship that we've been promising and as promised I have completely broken down the landing uh, the landing pod, the respawn pod to the battery and the landing gear plus a couple of bit of metal plates here just to keep it all in one piece nicely together and protected. Now what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to build it from this stage but I have said obviously that you can build it using the pod itself and there's a pretty generic design with that and if you'd like to see that please let me know in the comment section and i will do a specific video on building with the respawn pod but there are a couple of things that i want to point out now the first one is is that the respawn pod still has its beacon even though its beacon has gone because it's a respawn pod it keeps this marker here uh, now you can remove that and if you press the k button and you head to gps you have the respawn pod here you can double click that and it'll take it off there and it'll take it off your hotbar. You can completely delete it if you wish. Like so and you can just delete there. But it's good to have it there for now just in case you do place your pod down somewhere or uh, what will be our mining ship. Um, if you place it down somewhere and forget where you've put it at least you know you've got a marker to kind of point out where it is. Now... As I've mentioned, everything was on this respawn pod is now effectively on this base, or at least everything we needed. There's a couple of things that we could do with more of. Uh, the first thing we could do is, is actually putting the power up a little higher because this is not effective power supply. This is actually running a little bit lower, but at the moment it's providing us with all the resources we need. When we come to needing more power, I will then lift that up and obviously I'll cover that at that time. But just bear that in mind when you're doing your build. The other thing obviously we've got our survival kit here and we've got our means of producing resources here as well and obviously our O2H tube. Now the one thing we don't have is a way to get back here if we are in our travels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press the K again, I'm going to back over to our GPS here, create new GPS and as a matter of fact I'm not going to do that because that is the wrong one. I'm going to do new from current position and then I'm going to rename this here to our base location base location and then I'm going to take it and click it off show on HUD or you can obviously double click it off that's there for when we need it we've now got our power supply here obviously this is low power so it's going to need some charge uh, when we come to use our mining ship but what I want to do now is I want to get on with the mining ship build and I'm going to do a very basic design so I can show you the least thing you can do with the resources you have at present now bear in mind we've got plenty of opportunity for like steel plates and all that kind of stuff but the one thing we don't have the ability to build more of is our thrusters so if we head over to our thrusters which are in the progression at the moment because we haven't unlocked them if we have our atmospheric thrusters there now this is for a large grid but it is just the same for a small grid that you need the metal grids and when we come to making them you'll see why um, we've got some metal grids obviously because we've recycled them from the previous uh, components that we've had on there. The hydrogen thrusters and obviously the uh, atmospheric thrusters that were already on there. So we've got the metal grids that we can use to build something that's going to get us cobalt. Uh, now obviously we had a beacon and an antenna on this as well. And we also had the uh, ore detector on there as well. So we're going to recycle everything we got from them to put onto a small mining ship which is basically for practicality alone. We can then look at upgrading that at a later stage to be a little bit better for us, but right now we need a means of gathering quite a bit of resources very quickly rather than doing it manually. Now, one thing I want to point out here is, is you don't necessarily need a mining ship to do that if you want to go ahead and build something bigger off the bat. However, this is the easier way of doing it. And it also allows you to set up something that is going to be a foundation for something else. I, I tend to improve on my builds as I go. And then I make other builds for other things. So my mining ship is my mining ship. I will then expand on it at a later stage. Or then I will then build a bigger mining ship to do a different task. But I've got my small mining ship for small tasks. Or I will just completely rip it apart either way you've always got them resources there the only thing you lose is the battery cells that's all so without further ado let's have a look at what we need to actually get this off the ground well we've got our means of keeping it to the ground and it's a little low for my liking because obviously it's quite close 
but we should be able to at least get some means of doing what we need to do there may be a few adjustments we need to make at a later stage but for now we've got the meat need now the first thing we're going to need is a cockpit now if i press control and two i can have my second toolbar open if we press control one you got it back again to where it was but i'm going to press control two and go through the things we need on this mining ship alone first off we need a cockpit we're then going to need some form of cargo and we're going to use a medium cargo container now the medium cargo container is for small grids alone and it is probably the better one to use the small cargo containers are not worthwhile using on a small grid and the large cargo containers will hold too much weight for us to be able to do anything so we know we're going to need a cargo container we're also going to need our thrusters but obviously i can't add that yet because we need to create the cockpit now that may be the case where we design everything else and then we put them on at a later stage which is more than likely what we're going to do we're also going to need a drill we're also going to need some way of connecting everything if we go to our conveyors now there are two types of conveyors and the easiest way to do it is if you see the one with the little plus sign on here this is the one that you can scroll through and gives you the all the options for the specific grid that you've chosen so the small conveyor is for small grids the normal conveyor junction is for the large grids and that is the option that you've got with the large grid ones as well we want the small one because we're doing a small grid we're going to place that on now obviously as i've mentioned we need thrusters we also need some means of de connect um detecting ore so we're going to need an ore detector this is pretty much the basics of the basics we're not going to need things like antennas and stuff like that at the present moment because there's not really any requirement for it we've got our means of power the only last thing we're going to need is our connector this is pretty much the basic of basics you're going to get this is all we're going to need to be able to produce ourselves a mining ship so what we're going to start doing is we're going to start mapping out where we want everything but if we try it and do it now it'll tell us that we need interior plates for pretty much everything as a matter of fact that'll be steel steel plates but we're going to need some interior plates and steel plates at this stage we just need to get a handful of each so then we can just plan what we're actually doing so i'm just going to take a hundred of each only 160 interior plates anyway and then i'm going to plan my build now a couple of things to note whilst building the medium cargo containers on a small grid gives you two connector types you get a large grid connector and a small grid connector i call them grid connectors they're not really they're just basically large ports and small ports there are things you can do that we'll discuss at a later stage in advancements on building stuff that you can incorporate large grid items and small grid items on each other but we as i say we'll cover that more in a more advanced tutorial but right now we don't need to worry about it we're nowhere near that stage but there is something to note that is very important when building this little miner we want to connect it nice and easy to the base without having to move things over manually so for us to be able to do that we need the connector which i discussed now the connector has several ports it has four ports on either side it also has one large port now for what we want technically we only need the small ports because the large port allows movement of components so things like you know steel plates and stuff like that because we do not want to basically move any components in the ship then we only technically need the small port connectors however if we have a look at our medium cargo container it also has two small ports not on the other two sides and two large realistically i want to connect my cockpit and my drill to the small port connector and this is where i say to you that we may need to make some adjustments but i'm hoping i can connect it like so but I really want to connect it like so because if I connect it here and then I put my connector on you'll see that the connector is quite flush with it which means that if I come in to connect I may hit the battery so I want to kind of give it that little bit of extra protection 
and this is where we may need to lift our build but for now we're going to place that on there and I'm going to attempt to connect the connector to the bottom of it nice and closely so we haven't got enough clearance unfortunately now we've got two options and because I've got my build nicely connected to the ground I'm actually going to switch back over to the drill and I'm going to drill underneath it now the problem is is it may still be too close to this so I'm going to also remove it I'm then going to place a grid here and then going to place my little cargo container there making sure that that small grid connector is at the front and I'll explain shortly why and then I'm going to go and get my large my drill and right click to just clear some area now Energy you'll notice that because I wasn't sure on the largeness of the area it has actually now made it even more harder for us to build the ship so when you do it bear that in mind I've just done it because I knew it's going to be big because when you do the right click it is bigger but I wanted to show the effects that it's going to have because it only looks like it's a drop down a little bit here but it massively causes a problem at the front because it it it's really close to the ground now at the front so again you can resolve that problem by just going along and making yourself some room but just bear in mind as I showed you on the first instance here it can affect the back end here and it will still stay connected to the ground it's kind of a two pointer in one there that it will stay connected but it's just now caused us issues in the long run we're just going to clear out the ground here because I'm not too worried too much about it. What I would suggest if you're going to do it yourself is not really worry about things like this and just get away with building what you can in the area you can and expand it up or down as you need. Let's see if that's enough for what we want to do. And we can now connect it. I'm going to place that there. Make sure, making sure it's lined up perfectly with our block it is now the likelihood is, is I'm going to have to clear the ground a little bit more here but we're just running a little bit low on power so I'm just going to jump over and grab some power while I discuss the next point the next point I'm going to discuss is the fact that we need a way to connect our resources to our drill but also have it so that we can control it easy enough and also so that it's nice and flush because we don't want this massive block flying around and I will say that when you use the respawn pod to build a mining ship I do tend to find it's a bit clunky but it has a lot more protection and I'll discuss that in a second now if we go ahead and place a cockpit on here like so it's not going to be connected because there are two connectors on either side of the door you don't need that door to actually get into the ship you can get into the ship from any angle on the cockpit so the door is basically not required it's more of a, um, a a good look factor if you have it on the inside of a uh, small ship or something like that you, you've got a physical door to go to like you would on on you know a, on an airplane that's the kind of look it's going for but for us the practicality of it is not really there so what we need to remember is is our connector is actually here so you can do this any way you want but all I'm going to do is if you mouse scroll you will scroll through the available blocks for the small grid I'm then going to use the bend the corner bend small curve conveyor place a block there I'm going to then rotate so there's a block there and that there is basically going to place the connector now to one side of the cockpit there's no requirement of having it on both sides because only one is required now if I try to connect this I have to make sure I place my cursor on the middle block because that will centralize it like so when we grind when we weld this sorry you'll notice that the connector is connected correctly and that will then mean that everything that's on the front because you can see there's a front connector there will pass through to the cargo container which will then pass through to the connector another thing to note as well is there is actually a connector underneath the cockpit and you can go directly to it however it's right there you can knock your cockpit and cause damage which will throw you out of the ship and then you're stuck without being able to get in the damage things are sometimes a bit finicky like that so just bear in mind that you want to try and protect the things that you need to protect such as the battery the 
cockpit. And also, there are unfortunately times where you're going to cause damage to them. The last thing we need on here at the present is our mining drill. But as you can see, the size of the mining drill and the issue we had earlier is now causing us more problems. So we're going to have to go ahead and clear some more ground. We'll just clear the area here. And making sure the hitbox will be nice and clear. Hopefully that's going to be enough for us now. I'm going to jump out. Back over. And it is. Now we're going to make sure that this is connected to the front of the cockpit because there is a connector at the back and one on either side. Excellent, like so. In effect, this is a mining ship. The only thing that we now need is the thrusters, which we obviously can't build yet because we haven't built the cockpit. For our cockpit, we just need basic components. For our medium cargo container, again, we need basic components. For the drill, basic components. All the conveyors are basic components. The, the ore detector is the only thing that we haven't added onto here. And that needs the detector comp that we had on the previous build. And there is one final thing which I've left on purpose um, off my list because it is the most important thing that I want to point out that is always, always, always forgotten about when you build a ship. And I'll explain why it's forgotten and when you realize it's forgotten as well. It is the gyroscope. The gyroscope is the most forgotten thing I have ever heard anybody say. Why is my ship not turning? I run a multiplayer server and I have people on there who've got thousands of hours in a in this game. They built massive ships and they still go, my ship's not turning properly. Oh bollocks, I've forgotten my gyros. Every time. So I've left it off just so I can make the special comment that you need gyros but we can't build the gyros because if we have a look in here and we go to our cockpit again i can find it have i gone past it there we go gyroscope so once we've built our cockpit we'll be able to build our gyroscope as well you detect a comp you want to place anywhere and there's a nice convenient gap back here or you can place it underneath anywhere you want what i tend to do is i tend to place it like so and i'll explain why when we put the thrusters on because it looks kind of cool okay so what we want to do now is we want to go ahead and we want to weld everything up and by welding the cockpit up we will unlock our gyros and our thrusters so i'm going to save you time on this guide and do that quickly and we'll come back once it's done and there we have our little mining ship and now we can go ahead and get our two last items that we need if here we want our thrusters and we want just the normal atmospheric thrusters we don't want the large ones they're way too big cause way too much power requirements don't need them don't use them for now anyway we want the small ones and we want to place them onto there is a difference between the two even though it doesn't look like there is there is a dis difference and we will go through that when we go through building bigger ships but right now just worry about the smaller ones which are just atmosphere and our last thing our gyro now the gyro you can place anywhere i'm going to just place it on top of this block here and then i'm going to place my thrusters now we the thrusters require one metal grid if we head back over to our base here we can see that we've got nine metal grids so we can build nine of these there were four placed on the pod in a order like so but what i'm going to do is i'm going to place four here because we're going to be carrying a lot of weight so what we want to do is we want to make sure we've got the lift that's the four that are on the respawn pod you get four from the hydrogen engines so i'm going to place one in each direction so we're going to have one forward one backwards and one on either side what i tend to do is i tend to place them now if you look you can't place them like so because they don't technically connect on top they need to be placed sideways i tend to put one Energy there low. then i'm going to flip it over like so and nope that is wrong already 
fuel low. Oh, we're running low on fuel and energy, so we're just going to top up our fuel and energy. Fuel critical. That we can continue building safely. Now, as mentioned, it will refuel our hydrogen uh, into our normal suit, as you would expect, but it's not going to refill our bottle. Just going to recharge our power. Now, what I've actually done by mistake is, is I've actually logged off whilst I've not had somewhere to place myself. And I've actually died while I've been offline. And then when I've reconnected, it's respawned me back at my survival kit. I completely overlooked this, but it is a good thing to point out that if you're going to save and then log out, it's going to kill you. Because technically, your suit will die. Uh, now, you're usually quite safe if you do save and log out straight away. But what I've done is I've actually gone away and done something else. Come back. I've not realised I've died because I was stood at my base. But because I've stood here for so long, it's despawned my stuff. So I lost my level 1 welder. I also lost my hydrogen bottle. So, it's going to cause me a few problems. But I'm going to continue without my hydrogen bottle. And we will find a way on producing a new one. For now, we can just recharge our suit as and when we need it. And I'm going to place down my power supply, uh, my thrusters, like so, when it goes in, it won't go in front of there, but I'm going to place one that way there, then I'm going to rotate one there, and then I'm going to place one above the cockpit if I can, that won't let me, that's fine, I'll place one above that there, and then I'm going to place one at the back, like so. So we're covering five of the six directions, being forward, reverse, left and right, and up. We have gravity, we're not on a moon planet, so I'm not going to bother with downward thrust at the moment, because we've not really got many to spur. That's eight, and we've got one spur just in case we need it. I'm not going to waste that one by building it on here. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and weld these up. And then hopefully, we should have a mining ship that's going to work. It doesn't look pretty, but it does the job. And hopefully we can detect ourselves some ores and materials that we're going to need. Certainly iron, because we're running stone and it's not useful for us. But we want cobalt. Cobalt is our main priority, because with cobalt, we can improve this mining ship so it's a little bit better. And also, we can get some steel, so we can put some steel around it, make it a little bit sturdier. Because right now, if you disconnect this here, or this here, this mining ship will collapse. We can do a few things to present, prevent that by basically placing things like steel plates into here. So, and it doesn't necessarily have to be built up. But obviously, the more built up it is, the stronger it is. But you can go ahead and just do that there. And you can do the same here. For this one, and obviously you can place another one here. So I'm going to quickly weld these up and then I want to go through a couple of pointers with them. So I'll see you all shortly. And welcome back everybody. And I'm just finishing the last thruster now. But I thought I'd just point out that actually I decided to build myself a hydrogen bottle. Because I realised they weren't that, that expensive. And to do that all you need to do is click on the tools section within your production blueprints. And there's the hydrogen bottle there which is just iron, silicon and nickel. I thought it needed silver for some reason but it didn't when I checked. So I've gone ahead and built one and I've got a spare one. Build it up in the O2 generator and we're good to go. Uh, so we've only lost a nice uh, a nice new tool unfortunately. But we've got our last thruster done now. Now there's a couple of things I want to point out. The first one is the most obvious one is that when they are on and working they spin like so. So do a visual check, make sure they're all spinning. If you're using the respawn pod, then there's a couple of things you need to know. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to show you that right now. So if we jump in now and press K, like you would do if it was inside the respawn pod, you'll notice that anything you haven't done is in red. And I've left the gyro incomplete. 
that we can see that it is in red so you can see straight away if there's anything you're missing it will highlight up the other thing as well is for you whilst you're in the cockpit it will tell you the direction of each of your thrusters what it won't do is it won't show you that anywhere else except here now if you're using the respawn pod more than likely your first four thrusters will be hidden but they will look like so to see them and to be able to turn them on because they're usually turned off if you press this little button here it'll reappear you can then turn them on and you can also make them reappear permanently now we do need to get the parts for our gyroscope so we can get that finished and done but there is one thing i want to comment on before doing anything else this ship effectively will lift off up and down however if you've ever got a ship or a rover or anything like that try to avoid using the p button is the power button because if you use the p button you will unlock everything that you're connected to if you're using it to unlock if you're connected to a base via a connector you can use the p button if it's just one ship but get into the practice of not using the p button and i'll show you in a second what to use instead because if you do press that p button and you've got other ships on they will all fall off but got our p and it's technically connected so but it will have done that anyway without the p and i'll show that shortly but we just need to double check now what we need for our gyro i removed this plate here just so i can see the gyro i just need one large steel tube and two mortars which we can easily get for production so we need two mortars and one large steel tube that should give us our gyro and our ability to fly okay so a couple of things we want to do the first one is is we want to be able to lock and unlock rather than using the p button so that's our landing gear you can switch lock or you can tell it to lock or unlock for a landing gear you want to use the switch lock and it'll tell you that we're currently locked we want to then take the p off and you can see it says ready to lock and then if we move it says unlocked now if we bring ourselves to a more flat land and we press V, we'll get an external view. We'll have a look around again, it's just the old button and we can have a look around. Now the first thing I want to point out is the landing gear is blue. That means it is ready to connect. If we drop down, like so, pressing the C button, it goes green instantly. Using the switch lock it means it is permanently ready to connect. And as soon as you touch on something, even though that's technically slightly off the ground, as soon as it will make contact it will automatically lock you this is useful sometimes but sometimes it can be a little bit of a pain but for now leave it as it is because it's our fail safe later on we may remove the landing gear completely because we'll have alternative means to uh, park it but for now i'm just going to leave it there and then all i want to do is if i want to just make it so i can't accidentally lock myself to things is actually have it where it's set to auto lock on off if i switch that off and then i disconnect it won't connect it's white which means it's not ready to connect it just means it's unlocked but if i then go to a location where it will connect it will go yellow and then i have the option to press this button again and it will lock it automatically it now operates in a very same way as what the connector does now the connector's there, it's white, it means it's exactly the same, it's ready to connect to something, but we have nothing for it to connect to. There are a few things we need to do with our base to allow it to connect, and also charge our battery before we go out, because if we go out right now, okay, as I'm just sat here, if I lift myself off the ground, you'll notice I've got about an hour's worth of power. As the ship gets heavier, that power is going to drop dramatically, and we're going to struggle to get any resources. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take myself over to my ship, over to my base, sorry, and I'm just going to park it up so it's nice and safe until I'm ready to use it. Now you'll notice that this ship has got a lot of power for very small amounts of things that are on it because it's got absolutely no weight to it. Nothing at all. There is no wooden, there's no blocks, no excess blocks, no nothing. You'll also notice that when I connect it to the base, I then get this extended view because as mentioned when I pressed the P button, uh, when I was discussing that, 
I am now a part of this base. We are one unit going through from the landing gear to the base itself. If I pressed P, I am effectively you taking that one unit and disconnecting everything from it. We can now jump out. Now, this is connected to the base. It should be safe, there should be no problems with it whatsoever, but it's still using the battery power. If you want to make sure it doesn't break, is if you actually go into it. Now, if you turn the power off, and I'm going to uh, do that very quickly. And by, if you want to do it an easier way, is if you press your G button and you actually get your battery here. I usually place my batteries on the number 7. You can actually set to recharge on off. If I set my recharge to number 7, you'll notice that it's actually recharging the battery. We go into our control panel here, go to our battery. You'll show that it says fully depleted in zero. Current input is zero, current output is zero. But our landing gear is still connected. That is our fail safe. And I tend to place that in some of my ships because that gives me a little bit of a backup. And I do kind of tend to place it if I have a connector and this landing gear here. So then if something happens and the power supply drops, you still got the landing gear as a fail safe. What it also means is this now is no longer using any power whatsoever. So I can then continue doing what I need to do with the base. I'm going to do in a short while. And I don't have to worry too much about this. When I'm ready to use it, I'll just remember to disconnect it from the base. But I need to make sure I put the power on first. So we're going to go ahead and do what we need to do with our base. And that's by placing a connector onto the base. Now there are two things we need to do. We need some sort of supply for our refinery and our assembler. But we also need some way of connecting this because we need to charge the battery so we can go out. And also so we can remove everything from it. So there's two things we need. We need a small container. Because a small container is the best one to use at the present moment for us. Small cargo container. And as you can see, it's got connectors all the way around. It's it's completely connecting. So I'll place that there. And then what I tend to do is I tend to place the connector higher up. Now, where I've placed this here, it could cause us problems. Because it's so close to our power supply. So then we need to have a think about whether we want to leave it here or whether we move the power supply. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to do a little thing here. And I'm actually going to place my cargo container behind my assembler. I'm then going to get connectors. Conveyor, sorry. I'm then going to get the, the one that has the plus sign on conveyor junction. And then I'm going to place some conveyor tubes. The conveyor tubes are not a requirement at this stage for yourselves. If you don't want to use them, you don't have to use them. I just use them because I like my base to look nice and tidy. So I'm just going to place that like so. It's nice and tidy now. And what I can do is at a later stage, I can actually remove this one here. I can then get the conveyor sorter. Conveyor junction, sorry. And I can actually place that in there. Now the conveyor junction is quite expensive. But i tell you what we'll do. We'll leave it in there and we'll deal with it. Now there's a couple of things I want to point out before I move out on with the connector. Is that you can actually still access the refinery through this here like so. When we come to doing this late in a moment. Uh, when we've actually built it all up. You'll notice that this isn't accessible like so. But you can still get it from the outer edge here. It's a little trickier but you can still do it. And you can still do it as well through this. There are two ways there. The last thing we want to do is place our connector onto here, like so. It's the same connector for both large and small grid, except obviously when you're on large grid, it's the larger one. Now, the only thing we need to do here now is actually build this connector, because this connector is going to power our ship before we go out. So I'm going to build it up, and it does take a lot. It takes 130 steel plates, so we're going to. We're going to need some more requirement resources required, even. So I'm going to go ahead and place 40 of these in. No, we don't want 200, we want 40. And what else did we need here? Uh, so we needed 34 of them. We needed another 20, 
two constructed components, eight mortars, and eight computers. So we're going to do thirty of them. Oh, well, actually, we'll do twenty-two of them. Then I'll do ten of them, and we should take them. Oh, ten of them. We need anything else? My memory is terrible. Just mortars and computers. So we just need some more resources. So we'll jump down into our little hovel here. Grab some more stone. And thankfully this will probably be the last time we need to do this. Just grab some more stone so we've got what we need hopefully from one run. I've collected all up. Again, pressing the F and just going over them all. So our little bar is filled. Go. Drop that into our basic refinery. Hopefully that'll be enough to get us what we need, our requirements. Go. I think we've actually got enough computers. So it's actually built computers first. That's not a problem. So we've got the computers done. Just the other components now. We may not have enough in terms of stones. We may have to go back down again. Three more steel plates. Got the steel plate construction now. It's just construction components and the mortars that we need. So hopefully we've got enough in there to do. Uh, probably means we don't know. Nope, we're just short. Just a little shy for the mortars. So we'll just drop back down. Grab a little bit more stone. It shouldn't be too much. So I'll just do a quick thing down like so to the ground. Collect what we've got. This should be enough to get our last little bits. Go. Oh, I'm on the wrong side. I'll go this side. We'll be more than enough there to produce what we need. We'll just put the rest in while the, the last few ones are done. We just need four mortars now and we should have that functioning. Excellent, that's all we needed. Yeah, that, construct that connector is now done. We can now go back to our mining ship. We can place our battery power back on. And then we can disconnect. Like so. We scroll in. Get ourselves a nice little view here. And then I'm going to bring my little ship over here. Like so. Without crashing into anything. Now you'll notice you you, you forward reverse. And your side to side is a little clunky compared to the power you've got going up and down. There we go. Now. Just the same as landing gear, when it's ready to connect it goes yellow. And then, as we are right now, it'll be an absolute pain if we want to go into here to do it. So what we want to do is we want to press the G button. We want to then bring our connector onto the toolbar as well. And we want to switch lock for that. That operates exactly the same way as what the switch lock does for landing gear. It goes green when it's connected. This means now that it will transfer everything from the drill, the cockpit and the um, medium cargo container into the base manually we have to do it manually so what we do now is we can actually go in now technically it's not going to go anywhere because the tubing isn't complete but if we did want to transfer things we go onto here we then go into the connector we drag it into where we want to go however there is a way of doing this automatically and for what we want it is pretty easy to do and it's probably better to do it that way so the first thing I'd do is I'd actually get my ship, I'd press the 9 button, because I've set it to 9, blue means it's currently disconnected, but you need to pull away because it's got like a, a magnetic lock on it, so if you don't pull it away it'll, it'll get itself ready to lock again. I'm going to press F, it'll hover just for a moment, then I'm going to go press an F on there, go to the control panel, go to my connector, and then I'm going to set this here to collect all. 
So what it's going to do is it's actually going to collect it into here. Now, it's going to just pull into this connector. There's nothing else it's going to do. But hopefully what that means is, is if it's the difference between emptying the ship and not, it will do. And it just means it'll sit in there until it's full and then whatever's left is in the ship. We're going to have to manually move some stuff over, but our, our refinery is going to attempt to refine everything anyway. That's just something I tend to do. It's generally whether you want to do it or not. But that's it. We've got our little miner built. Now, as I say, the power supply that we've got on it is not going to last us. So I'm going to drop it back down again. Have it connect with the base. I'm going to connect it. If we press K, and the reason why I didn't go too much into power uh, at an earlier stage is because uh, we're kind of touching on it here. And you'll notice that the landing gear is grey here. That's just because it's on hidden, like I was mentioning with the uh, thrusters, because the landing gear was the last feature that was left on the uh, respawn pod. We just press that on and it'll stay in there. There we go. Now, our battery. There are two batteries on this screen. Everything that's orange, or which would be a different colour to other than white, means it's on a separate grid. There are grids and subgrids in the game. Anything that is what you're currently connected to is the main grid. If you then are connected via a connector, a piston, or a rotor, you're then on a subgrid to the main grid, and it changes the colour to tell you so. So out of the two batteries, the white one is the one that's on our ship. You'll notice it says fully recharged in six hours. So in six hours time, we'll have full power of the battery and we can do what we need to do. Realistically, I don't want to wait six hours. I will put it on charge once I've completed this episode and we can let it charge. So I'm going to take it off charge now. And then hopefully we've got enough power to get ourselves some cobalt that's all we need is just cobalt so we're going to drag ourselves in here now depending on how you want to fly you can fly inside or outside it doesn't really matter too much but what i will say is 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 it's a little harder to see inside how close to the ground you are so i tend to just drop it out and then i'm going to fly nice and close to the ground now we notice we've got nickel silicon and magnesium we don't need magnesium at the present moment we want just cobalt at the moment now there's another thing I want to point out whilst we're flying around and that is if you notice every time I stop pressing the W key we are slowed down by that front thruster there that's pacing forward. If we get to our thrusters here and it says backwards we actually put this on and put it as backward like a type. We can then press our, K, uh, sorry, our G button we can find the one that says backward Place that onto here, toggle block on off, and we can actually turn it off. That now, when we stop, it will just casually oh, keep going, and the momentum will keep us flying. If you need an emergency stop, you can push it down like so, and the bo bo bottom thrusters will stop us like so, or you just flick that button back on and it turns back on. What that does is saves you a little bit of power when you're flying around. As you'll notice that we are actually using quite a bit of power. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a hover around here because we've got quite a fair bit of ore that I've been picking up. You don't want to fly too fast because what you'll end up doing is you'll actually like move yourself out of the area before your ore detector has picked it up. We've got some silver there. That's useful to know. I'll remember that for next time. But I want to just a nice casual speed. So I tend to just keep it at about about 18 that should do us we can just keep hovering around looking for ores and what we want is cobalt because cobalt then means we can have better thrusters and we can do some more with the ship so i'm just gonna have a hover around the area and we're gonna look for cobalt hopefully mine a little bit of cobalt and get back to the base so once i found the cobalt we'll get back and then we'll do something with it and welcome back and as you can see we're just hovering above some cobalt and I'm just going to plonk myself down for a moment just so I can mention a couple of things. The first one I want to mention is that you get a artificial horizon, horizon marker which is the two lines that are in front of the ship. These allow you to kind of gauge which way your ship's pointing and keep you nice and smooth when you're flying. If you lose sight of that the likelihood is, is you're either too high or too low so bear that in mind. The next thing as well that I want to talk about is using the drill. 
Now the drill operates in pretty much the same way as you'd expect the drill to operate, like your hand drill. However, there is a couple of slight differences. The hand drill, if you did use it, you can actually double click it and it will permanently keep it going. Same can be said if you double right click it and they operate just as you would expect them to. However, with the drill, clicking does pretty much nothing. But we can change that. You can drag the drill onto your hotbar and you can have it with toggle block on off and it will drill on and off. But what that will do is that will just collect ore. As you can see, it's collecting it now. If I go into my inventory, you'll see I'm picking up the ice that's on the surface. So it's pretty good if you just want to keep your hands off you, you know, your, your mouse. However, it's not always ideal. So what can we do to resolve that? Well, what we can do is if we go to block tools, our drills in here, if we drag that over to here, what that means is now we have it just like we would with our mouse. Left click drills, right click clears. That is useful for us. So if we unlock, we find our cobalt. Now, if you notice, I actually think I've actually caused some damage. Have I caused some damage? I think we're safe. We got away with it. Now, I actually turned my thruster off. That would be why. Now, what you'll notice is if I do this here, you'll notice that the ship will struggle to keep itself upright. And when we get some weight on, it's going to struggle even more. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm actually going to clear down here because we don't want any of these resources. We want to get to the lovely cobalt. What I don't want to do is I want to just drill downwards because then we're not going to be able to get ourselves out. And I'll explain why when we get a little bit closer. Now the drills are fairly robust but don't be throwing it around because it will break it. But what we want to do is we just want to give ourselves a nice bit of an area here to work with. And you'll see just how much better it is having a ship do the job for you rather than trying to do it yourself. Now what we're doing is, is we're right clicking here so we're not actually collecting anything in we've just got the same 198 ice that we had earlier and nothing else because we don't want to worry too much about it now we are actually hitting something else there that nickel i think that might be the nickel there it's useful to have because obviously the nickel is better raw rather than it is out of the uh, stone but we've just hit cobalt which means if we now start left clicking and collecting this cobalt we can gather it around now you'll notice i mentioned a little earlier about lighting and um, the lighting that you're actually seeing isn't anything to do with the ship and because this planet's quite light we're not too bad and we're getting the light from our suit coming through the outside of the ship if you're finding it's too dark you can place a light on your drill and then you can increase that drill's light double check our weight so our drill and connector are empty, but we're, we're quite hefty on weight already. So I don't want to, oh, we're not too bad. So I'll risk getting a little bit more here. But yeah, if you want to connect to light, you can do. And I'll just go through in a short while how to uh, do that. And a few things that we can do with it once we're back at the base. But I just wanted to get some cobalt that we can start looking at our next objective when it comes to increasing this ship. Now you want to keep an eye out on the right hand side the weight because obviously the more weight we have the, the harder it's going to be for this ship to travel. You also need to keep an eye out on the time. You notice we got 19 minutes of power and it's just dropping down to 14. You got to bear in mind that whilst bearing in mind what you're actually mining. Now we're at 706,000 kilos. So I think 70,000 kilos sorry 70,000 kilos. So I'm actually going to bring myself out because we will not have much go power. Now, we can see in the distance there our base because this is quite a flat terrain. However, if we'd lost our base, if we press the K, we can go to our GPS. We can double click to access our base location. And it comes up on our little hot bar there, uh, on our hood there. So we want to head out back to our base now to drop off our goodies. And you notice that we now have 15 minutes of power from that one hour. So be wary of that the weight will reduce your power supply but if we coast in nicely there without using the front thruster we'll now bring the front thruster on to slow us down use the back ones as well there we go 
we're almost back at the base so I'll leave the thruster on just so we can come in nice and steady now you want to stay nice and steady you don't want to come flying in because if you hit it you'll blow it up and that's the last thing we want to do so we want to bring ourselves in nice and easy using that there I have definitely placed that too close power wise that's not a problem we can deal with that later We'll just make sure we're not going to hit it. We're going to bring ourselves in nicely. When we get close by, it'll magnetically connect. We're nice safe to now connect. And of course, it's going to drag things into our connector because we've set it to do so. So we'll just then take the cobalt because we only want the cobalt at the present moment. Take as much as we can. We can then head on over to the basic refinery and we can place that cobalt in. And it can now start wiping away the cobalt. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to set the production for our metal grids and I'm going to set 100 metal grids because we're going to need them for our power supply and all, uh, not for our power supply, sorry, for our thrusters so we'll let it just plod along with building as many as it can for now and that's going to be it for this episode because I want to charge the power on the miner so that we can go out and do some more bits and bobs we're going to find ourselves some, um, some iron and stuff like that now the only other thing we could have done that's different to what I have done here and the only reason why I've not bothered is because the cobalt that I've gathered is going to be okay for now. And I can roughly work out where we've come from. The only thing we could have done differently is we could have saved the GPS marker like we did for the base at the cobalt. So we knew exactly where the cobalt was and that it contained nickel as well. It's the only difference. But the next thing we need is iron because obviously the better resource is the raw material. And if we get iron, we can then build some better things a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. And we can start looking at expanding the base, building a better mining ship, and actually building a mining ship that's got some kind of style to it as well. You know, so it's got some armor plates on it, so it's got a little bit of protection when it crashes into things. Because right now, if we crash into something, the first thing that's going to break is something that we require. Whether it be the drill, the connector, the power supply, or something like that. The other thing that I am going to want to do with this little builder here is I'm going to want to put a second power supply on it. But I'm going to consider whether or not I actually want to expand it to make it bigger or whether or not we want to keep it the same. These are all decisions that you need to decide as well because if you don't want to build something like that then you can build a different style. We also want to look at the idea of building a mining platform because there is magnesium here but we could also use stone. We don't have to find rare resources, but rare resources are a bit better for us and they will just make it a little bit easier for us to build things like this. That will connect and then it will drain our ship for us while we wait. Now, now that we've got this here, we can sit inside this safely. Our power supply will be topped up. The only thing that isn't going to get topped up is our H2O2 because we've got no H2O2 supply at the present moment. Once we connect everything through, in theory we do have a connection, so we will definitely get our O2, but whether it fills our H2 is a different story. Well that's it for now for this episode. We've built ourselves a mining ship, but we're good to go with collecting more resources. Hopefully it's given you an idea on what you can do to build your mining ship. If you've got any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Let me know any suggestions, tips or ideas that you may have or if you've just got questions about you know, anything else to do with it then please leave them below. If I can't answer them in the, in the comment section I will bring up another video and answer them there. But until next time everybody take care for now and I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye for now.